Hi guys and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. What you see in the vise is a March brown. So without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vise then is a Hanak H130 barbless hook. This one's at size 10, it's on a fine wire and it's finished in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is from Semplify. This is classic wax thread at A top. As you can see, it's brown. And the first thing I want to do is get a little bit of wax onto my thread. I uh, don't need much, just to help bed it down to the shank. Now I'm going to catch just back from the eye and then run a bed of thread all the way down the shank using my rat's tail as a guide just to get them touching turns. Then as I get up to approximately where a barb is on a barbed hook, I'm going to just take away my tail end. Now, for the tailing of this fly, I'm using some Cock de Leon. I'm going to hold the label up so I don't embarrass myself by trying to say the name, uh, which I've done in the past. <laughs> so it's a lovely feather. Cock de Leon's great for tailing, for bugs, dries, you name it. It's just a lovely feather. Uh, nice and barred and really thin and mobile. So I'm taking approximately half a dozen, maybe a little more, off the stem and I want approximately the length of the body. On this one, I'm going to catch a couple of turns. Just have a look at it, that looks pretty good. Now before I secure it in, I'm going to lift the feather up and just trim away some. And as I go back up, I want to catch in my ribbing material. And what I'm using to rib is some hand-selected peacock hair that's been stripped. Um, it's natural. You can get these in different colours. Uh, I do like the brown as well, but I'm using natural today. Now, I don't want the really thin part that you see here. So I'm just going to trim that. Uh, I've left a little bit that I'm going to catch in. And I'm just having a look to see what side I want to come up. Because there, there'll be two different sides and I want the most um, defined, if you like. So I think I've picked the right side. I hope so. <laughs> and I'm going to come all the way up the body to the thorax area. Now, at the thorax area, I want to just develop a little taper. I'm just going to spin my thread anti-clockwise, try and flatten it out a little. And what I'm looking for is the cigar shape, which uh, I try and get in, in most of my flax. So that looks pretty good. I've got a nice little taper going on. Next thing I want to do is grab my hackle pliers and I'm going to attach it to the herald. Now this is always a twitchy bum time. The herald's very, very delicate, um, especially stripped herald. It, it can be super delicate. So I'm going to get some extra turns just in at the front of the fly there. And what I want to do with this is using the rotary function on my vise I don't want touching turns. I want to get real definition into the body of this fly. And the best way of doing that is to leave a little gap in between your herald. And that will give you really good definition. Now if you've got peacock herald that is well defined, then you can do touching turns. And I've seen some beautiful flies um, with really well defined herald and it looks they look fantastic but on this occasion mine isn't particularly well defined i'm going to leave that gap for the thread so that i can get that definition now just trapping in my hero with a couple of turns and if i was feeling brave i would just snap that away now but i'm not feeling so brave I'm going to just snip it away with my scissors. Uh, sometimes you just get a feel for when you can 
get away with stuff and I just don't feel like pulling it would work on this occasion. Now, as I was saying, herald's really delicate, so we're going to protect the herald with a little layer of UV resin. Now, you can use varnish, but it just means that you've got to set the fly off to the side to dry once you've applied your coat of varnish. The beauty of UV is that you can carry on tying. Just bear with me. Want to make sure I get a nice even coat around the body. And you can see already that even before I've cured the resin, um, it's, it's given me some really nice definition on that body. And it's darkened up the thread a little. You might notice that the, the colour's now gone quite dark, which is fine. Uh, March brown, they come in all shapes and sizes. But I quite like the, the shade that this brown thread gives you once it's coated in UV resin. So, I'm content that that is cured, and I'm going to add my thorax. Now, what I'm using is uh, some Hanak dubbing. Uh, Hanak competition it is. And what do they call this? It's called Brown Pardo. And it's, it's a really spiky, rough dubbing, if you like, um, which gives a great impression of legs. So, I've taken a little pinch out the packet, and you don't need very much for this. And then I'm going to try and dub it onto the thread. I don't want to, I don't want to crush it if you know what I mean. I want to keep it nice and rough. And I'm going to take out some of the fibres once the fly's finished. So I'll come back to the thorax area, and then just start to build up that nice thorax. Now that's as, uh, about as big as I want it, and maybe a little bigger than I want it actually. But it's looking not too bad. As you can see, all that spikiness is, is really, I really like that. Now, before I go on to tie in my wing, I'm going to add a little bit of wax to my thread to just make sure that it grips the CDC when I tie it in. Now, the CDC I'm using is some Ultra Select, uh, the days of me scrounging around my friends for um, CDC feathers, and I, I really did appreciate it, uh, are finished though. It takes uh, a long time to sort through um, just rough CDC, whereas the Ultra Select, it comes in the packets. Now what I've done is I've stacked five plumes. Now that may seem excessive, for a, a dry fly for the rivers but what I would say is if you want to fish this fly on anything other than canal stretches of water you're going to need a minimum of five plumes to keep it floating so what I want to do is I want to just tie it in just past the end of the body there you can see so I'm going to dress that up pinch it with the thumb and forefinger of my left hand and then get a couple of tight wraps. I'm going to just turn my uh, turn the vice so I can check your side. That looks okay. So I'm going to lift the front of the CDC, get a couple of turns in front, and then with my sharpest scissors, which aren't very sharp at the moment, these will be getting the old sharpening treatment when I go up to the BFFI. I'm going to come in and just with the tips, sorry my fingers are in the way there, I'm just taking away the excess CDC. Now, with uh, the cut ends you want to just come in front so that you catch them in and then you can create your head. Now, that's looking not too bad. And I'm going to be honest with you folks, generally when I'm doing fly tying tutorials, I sit down and it's a one take job. I run through the fly and it's easy, I find it easy because I've been tying for a long, long time. But this fly, and I may be speaking too soon before I finish, 
this is my fourth attempt at videoing it because every time I've done it, I've had real drama tying the wing in, but it seems to have just fallen right this time. So uh, what's the point? My, my point is, regardless of how good you are at fly tying, there'll always be something that'll give you a headache. And the thing is not to abandon it, it's to keep going until you do get it right. And uh, on this occasion, I've managed that, thank God. Okay, so I've got my wet finish tool. And I'm going to just finish off three turn whip finish. And even after all the faff that I've had, uh, I'll probably sit down and tie another ten of these for my boxes. It's just a, a great wee fly, especially early season. Now, to finish it off, I'm going to use, uh, again, UV resin. You can use whatever your poison is. So if you like to Use super glue, use super glue. If you like to use varnish, use varnish. But that's looking pretty sweet. And the last hour and a half's been well worth it. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video. I hope you got some uh, tips and hints out of it and that you give this a go. It's definitely worth the effort. And if you keep having trouble with the wing, you know what to do. Persevere and it will come. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.